Colonel Bologna, this is General Liverloaf. Yes, sir, Liverloaf. Yes, sir. Okay. We know that the target has left the building. Notice the trail of pepperoni right there. Roger. All right. Now, he told us we couldn't record an episode because, well, you know, he's a pod boss. Yes, sir. Well, he left Arnold in charge. Arnold. Oh, I didn't know. I, is Arnold allowed to talk? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, Let's have Arnold bust through that big steel door that they just reinforced this past weekend. I seen him and Ian doing it. They reinforced it. We could have Arnold bust through there and we can get to the filing cabinets. I mean, I'm the one that does all the work and I still don't know the passcode to get into the doors. We'll, we'll just have Arnold break through it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Arnold, Maria Shriver is in there with Jesse right now. You son of a bitch. Sometimes you need a change. Because we are never given our time. Our movies are mocked. Our decisions are made for us. Our opinions are told to us. Our thoughts scorned. We don't matter. Podboss Mania is sweeping the podcast scene. So the question is, I'd like to ask you that question right now. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? And the answer is, do our own podcast. Introducing the Lunch Meat Counter Revolution. What's up, my dude? Special episode here with my Lunch Meat Counter brother, Colonel Bologna. What, what is the good word there, Liver Loaf? Jesse's gone. Well, that's two words. Can I have two words? You can have it. You can have as many good words as you want to. Because Are see, you sure? I, oh, absolutely. Unlike your pod boss and unlike my contemporary pod boss, they're not here. They can't stop us. So we can do whatever the hell we want. I don't, I've never had that kind of power. I'll, I'll tell you what. What is one of the things that you have wanted to do so much with Jesse being on the show? Yes, I want to be able to talk sometimes. I mean, I usually record this like in two separate files, my dude. So I, I get a little emotional when I think about it. I know. I, and, I understand. I mean, and, and, because it, it's kind of the same way here. Without Ian here, I can actually, I, I think my biggest thing is I'm going to be able to breathe, enjoy ourselves. And you know what, Richard? If you want to talk, you can talk. Let me give you an example, like, because, you know, I have to do all the editing and recording and paying for the stuff and, you know, uh -huh. you know, well, I can, I recorded it in two separate files one time just because I wanted to see if it'd be easier to edit on me. So I cut, uh -huh. cut, out, uh, cut out all of the, all of the silence. And then I looked at the different file links and out of a 30 minute episode, Jesse had 26 minutes and 30 seconds, and all I had was 3.5 minutes. So, Jesse should probably be referred to from this point forward as 2630. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I don't want to put a number on him because that makes, you know, that would, you know, it makes me feel like I'm calling him a prisoner. But you know what? If that's the case, if in doing so makes him feel like a prisoner, then he'll know what it feels like for you. I don't think he will. He'll he'll get off because of the, you know, the the old PB, the PBC, the pod boss clause, and all like jail sentencing. Yeah, but see, at the same time, if 
you know, if anybody knows anything about prisons and stuff like that, there really is no clause or, you know, I mean, he could say, well, this is just going to be prison rules, but guess what? He's not here to, to stop us. So what the hell? This is true. You know, one time I stood up for myself and Jesse knocked me back down. Why does he do that? I, I think it's because he, he's older than me. By like a couple of months, and uh -huh. he's like, "I may not be your daddy, but I'll treat you like you're my son." And just wow, yeah. Now see, that's he wanted just, me that's to call just... him Pod Daddy. He wanted you to call him Pod Daddy. Pod Daddy. You see, now excuse my French, but that's just kind of fucked up. Yeah. You know, and... Ian. Ian's kind of the same way. He, you know, he like like with my love of Cradle of Fear, he just shoots it down. He shits on it every time. Time I I don't have a choice. I have to keep it where it is on the list. I don't like it. I want it to be the very bottom of the list. But no, Mister Fucking High and Mighty Bald Headed Chimp says no. That's got to stay right there where it's at. Oh yeah, I mean, I listened to that show about the Cradle of Fear. I mean, it was kind uh -huh. of visual for me to try to watch the movie, so I mm -hmm. understand. But I don't want to disagree with you, but he shot it down and nuclear Jesse did. I mean, um, nuclear bombed it like 18 times. Oh, it was, it was, it horrible. was horrible. And you I know what? I'm sorry for you. For, for what it's worth, I'm going to allow you to not be able to have that visual of that movie. And I want you to just take it for what it is. Yeah, and enjoy a movie for what it is. Exactly. Like, Whether it's good or bad, it doesn't have to be. Mm, you know, I'm Jesse or I'm Ian. You have to like it. You know, it that becomes real tiring after a while. And and it's not always phenomenal. No, you it's know. not. Yeah. Like I know nobody in our group likes poultry guys. You know, oh, I personally that's... loved it because I couldn't stop stop laughing at all the stupid idiotic puns in the and, movie. And you and you know what? It's okay for you to like it. It's okay for me not to like it. Right. It's okay. See, we can have differing opinions. Yes. Ian doesn't but, let you have your own opinion either. It, no. You just, I mean, Cradle of Filth is a perfect example. You don't get your own opinion with him. Well, it, okay. Let me ask you this then. Did, okay. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. I got to be correct here because this will be published. Is, okay. Does Pod Boss Ian say if you're to have an opinion, he'll tell it to you? Well, see, no, he doesn't. He's he says if you want an opinion, he's going to beat it into me. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot that step because I got yeah. beaten the head with a um, like Triple H and sledgehammer. Exactly, out the electrified cage. Well, exactly. Circa, what was it? Halloween Havoc. Uh, yeah, the one that 80? caught on fire. The, the movie yeah. had to spray out. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, Ian. Ian is. Uh, I he's like the Abdullah the Butcher of Pod Bosses. Oh. Yeah. Carrying yeah. the hepatitis I, and everything on the floor. Oh man, he's got the God of Her Pacifolades, the whole kit and caboodle. You know, I would. I, I can't say he's Bruiser Brody because Bruiser Brody was really, really cool and he was just a madman. Oh yeah, yeah. He's like he's more like the Abdullah the Butcher. And I would I would dare to say that Jesse is more along the lines of oh it's gotta help me out here. Goldberg. Goldberg's attitude meets with Roddy Piper and Macho Man's craziness. Now see that's something I'd want to see. I don't. I get it every week. Oh, that's you know. I guess you're right. But see, this is the difference. We, I, I don't. I've never sat with Jesse, and you really never sat with Ian. So I, I think that at some point, you know, it's going to have to come to that crossroads where we would have to, um, uh, what's that movie? Wife swap our pod bosses. Oh, that would be really interesting. But that would be. We We've got to make it their idea. They'll never listen to us. No, they will never listen to us. I mean, we could throw in some subliminal type hints, but they would just look at us like, you know, like Ian does some of the times where I say something, he's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. See, he knows what I'm talking about. He's just mentally trying to shoot me down. So he 
he gives you the visual put down while I get the Jesse sigh. Yes, and if you <sighs> see with with your guys' recording stuff and or Jesse's recording stuff, you never really get to hear the sigh. The sigh oh, is is basically the electric chair of Halloween Havoc. Oh gosh, yes. I mean, I get it so often, and he, to be honest with you, he tells me to edit it out. Because oh, I'm not surprised by that. He doesn't want you to be able to hear it because it gives you enjoyment. Well, when he's telling you these things, does he sometimes, uh, has he had a brownie or a chocolate bar? I do know that he was really chittery the other day. Okay. And I could hear a toilet flushing repeatedly like the handle was in the down position the entire time. So it was barely even able to refill itself back up before it was dumping it again. Yeah. Huh. And, and I could hear like an Italian voice going, that's the pepperoni. That's uh, the pepperoni. Well, I'll tell you what I I've learned from just very little, ex, you know, from some experience with it, that if you hear that again, and he comes out and says, it's a me, Mario, stop the show and walk away as fast as you humanly can because he's going to treat you like your King Koopa or something. Man, he carries me in the bathroom with him. Why? That's just weird. I, yeah, it is. I felt very I mean, uncomfortable and and I and I approached him about this and he said, you'll feel uncomfortable whenever I tell you you'll feel uncomfortable. Sit geez. there and shut up and edit this out. So he doesn't even let you take a shower or nothing afterwards. Dude, I haven't I haven't been home in like three weeks, four days, seven hours. Oh I was, man. I, I was heading home to, you know, take a break whenever you called me because you hadn't heard from me. And that's when we decided to break in here and record our own show. Uh I didn't you know and being part of your you're true. You know, I, I guess I genuinely feel sorry for that. I didn't realize that it was that bad. I didn't realize other people had it that good. I mean, you can hear it in the show that it's bad, but I didn't realize it was that bad. We need to get you out of there. I know. And, and I think it all stemmed from one time. I, I, I said, Jesse, you know, the kind of relationship you have with Katie. And he said, what? I said, you're her bottom bitch. And, Ever since then, he's, he's treated me like a bottom bitch. Jesus. Oh. You know, and I, I honestly don't know what happened with him because he was never like that before. I think that, you know, I think what it is is with you editing the show, he feels like he's got a lot more power. Oh, yes. And you would think that with if he was editing the show, he would feel like he has a lot more power, which I, I've i always wondered whether Jesse was backwards or not. I think he is. I wonder if he puts his pants on backwards like crisscross. Well, he told me he likes to go commando so that he can reach down and remind himself that he's a man. You, you need to be careful with the commando talk. I think Arnold's still rummaging through that file cabinet. I know. He's supposed he to be might. hunting the check that Jesse promised me. He's not going to find it because I guarantee you it doesn't exist. Yeah, you're very true there. You, you have to be real careful with Jesse when he tells you things. Yeah, I've noticed that because he'll look me right in the eye, well, off to the side, and and lie straight to where he thinks my face is. <laughs> he can't hold it, can you? <laughs> oh, I remember one time. I don't, uh, I don't. I don't remember if Jesse will remember it or not, but some. I don't, we were going back and forth on some. I don't remember what it was because I think I can't remember exactly what sparked it. But with me, if I get on just some kind of a roll of something, I'll run with it until I till I think that it's dead. I think I yes. took a picture of just like the wall slash part ceiling, and I posted it to his Facebook. and said, here's your selfie that you wanted, Jesse. <laughs> and see, that's the kind of stuff that I would do if I had a friend that was blind and I could see. Oh, dude. You know, I mean, stuff like that, I find it funny. Because I can just hear, I can hear him sighing from over here, and it, it just it makes me fucking giggle. Yes, yes, and I wish I had listened to 
to your pod boss, you know, pod boss in whenever I went to make my Super Bowl bet. Mm-hmm. I, I bet on the 49ers, but Ian told me that he knew they weren't going to win because he could smell defeat in the air. He's real well, and here's the thing about that is he he can smell defeat from it doesn't you don't even have to be in the air. He can just be sitting in his house and he can smell somebody's defeat like a block away. It's fucking weird. His his fetish with that has gotten out of control. You know what would be funny though? If we get uh, Jesse over there and like Jesse rub his feet all over Ian. I was thinking not at all. I was thinking, well, all right, so here's the thing. I think that with pod bosses in general, if you put them in a room together, there may be some footsies action going on. Yeah, Jesse's tried that with me. And I'm not surprised by that. He, You know, I think that's why him and Ian get along so well is they have a thing for feet. Oh. Well, Jesse thinks they're feet. I mean, it could be a, you know, a dead cod laying on the ground or something. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's weird. Really weird. Well, the way they treat us is weird. It's very weird. That's why that's why I'm glad that we're doing this because we can have a chance to talk. Exactly. I mean, we haven't had a good catch up in a while. No, and you don't even have to ask me permission to speak. (laughs) Which is so unusual. I I don't do. I mean, I, I hope that you're prepared for it. It's a bit overwhelming. I took a couple of Xanaxes, you know. <laughs> to prepare Did you? Myself. I'm prepared. Very good. Uh, but, you know, me and you have been talking about this for, what, a couple of months now? It, yeah. Um, watching this movie, and I've watched it, I think, three times since we first started talking about it. Wow, okay. And I told you, man, I love this movie. Ew. Now, me and you had talked, like, through text, you know, about the go-to music, the go-to movies, and both of us mm-hmm. listed Twister. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's that good of a movie to me. Um, you know, like I said, I've watched it three times since we talked about recording this, you know, and okay. you had told me that if you catch it on TV, it's like you can't stop. You have to um, stop channel surfing and, and watch the movie. You can't. And, you know, I think that the thing with this movie is I was thinking about this earlier and here we go. I'm going to go off on a tirade about, well, hey, I was at work and I was thinking Um, (laughs) this movie. To me, there's very I can only think right up on a couple of movies that I get genuinely geeked for, you know, Um, first one being National Lampoon's Vacation. I love that movie. I'll I'll watch it anytime it's on and you never get tired of them. Twister is the same way. I I watched it recently, as much as as probably far back as about maybe six months ago. I seen it was on Prime or something like that, and I watched it again, and I I got that feeling of how much I loved it. I mean, it brought me all the way back to the first time I seen it. Yes, yes. I mean, you just described my exact feelings about the movie. How in all I was the first time I watched it, and that hasn't mm-hmm. changed, and it's it hasn't. And you know, I mean, granted, sure, the CGI was not all that great at the time. They did what they could with it, but in my opinion, it was effective. Um, it told a great fucking story. The cast you you couldn't have, uh cast a better group of actors, in my opinion, than what they did. No, and to. To know that Helen Hunt's first real movie, I believe. I believe it was, yeah. Um, and the fact that her and Bill Paxton almost like lost their sight because of the lights and all that they had to use. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's just still such how they were able to do so much with so little. But you know, and that's just, I'm sorry. I was say, like, if they were to remake the same movie with today's technology, I don't think you'd get the same effect. You know, and I, you know, like you and I were talking about the the sequel to it that the trailer dropped during the Super Bowl. I watched it, and I'm I'm jazzed for it. I'm looking forward to seeing it. 
I kind of want to go to the theater and see it just because of we have those IMAX theaters here with the big oh, surround sound yeah. underneath all the yeah. seats and everything. We went to it was one of the Fast and the Furious ones. We went to the because they have a and this is every time I hear it, I giggle myself. So bear with me here. There's a theater in there. It's called the Big D. Yeah. My, 12, my 12 year old mind automatically goes to other places, but it's a bigger screen than the other uh theater parts in there yeah, and they all they got uh-huh. they they got all the subwoofers under the seats well that's the about what you think they, they, i mean i don't know I, if it would, I don't know if it would tickle jesse's or not but the movie wasn't that good but the sound and the experience was phenomenal and what i would love to go and see it in that absolutely do i want to pay the i'm sure that it's probably up to around 25 28 bucks a ticket for it i don't know yet I, I would have to I mean but see I can argue the fact that I can because it comes out in the month of my birthday okay you know, like, oh give me a gift but see our theater isn't that quality we have like you know good sound but like recliners mm. and I yeah, it's it's the, the theater here is really nice for that because like I said they've got those the speakers underneath the seats and it's it's an experience that you have to uh, basically experience in person to appreciate. And I'm sure that with this one, it's going to be, you know, absolutely phenomenal. This is what kind of one of those movies that you need a big stereo surround sound to watch it on just to get that full effect. Yes. You know, it yes. was like um, it was like Blair Witch. You needed because I watched it on uh, VHS, I think. And then I, I got a surround sound. Really? Yeah, I remember watching all VHS. I didn't have a nice. surround sound though. Well, I think we upgraded to a to a DVD player, and then I got a surround sound too. And I bought it on um, DVD and had the surrounds. And there were probably ten or fifteen things that I could hear with the surround sound that I didn't hear through the VHS. What made it that much better? Because it sounded like everything was coming around behind you. He, <clears throat> sorry, my pod boss has one hell of a setup in his basement for watching movies where yeah. there are speakers along every corner and a gigantic sub that paranormal activity is the movie to watch on that because it will genuinely scare the shit out of you. Ooh, that does sound like a sweet setup. Because just of the thumps and they're real subtle, but you 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 think you're hearing it and then just boom, it's and totally different experience. Hear. But this is a movie that you, you need to experience with that kind of a setup. I agree. Um, now, I, I listen to mine like in, in headphones. But, okay. I mean, they're not like your Dollar Tree headphones. You know, okay. That, I mean, they're not the, or the Beats by Dr. Dre, but they're good quality. You know, and I've noticed, <clears throat> excuse me, that like watching it with surround sound, watching it with headphones, and re-watching a movie that you've seen before, do you find yourself catching stuff that you missed before? Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. That's I why I like that. I love the background dialogue in movies as well. And I catch that a lot with the surround sound and with the headphones. And I love that's it. what makes it nice because you're you're basically, I think with headphones, it would be better because it's, especially if you have like those noise canceling ones where you, when yes. you put them in, I yes. mean, it, it quiets down a lot. That's where it really helps. But yeah, headphones are surround sound. You you catch so many different varying things in there that you have missed the first time that it's almost, dare I say, a, a, a whole new movie to you. Well, it, it I mean, it basically is because, I mean, you, you didn't catch that before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, for instance, I, I can't tell you how many times I've watched this movie in, what, 27 years? But mm -hmm. watching it with the surround sound and the headphones, you could catch Joe screaming daddy whenever he was jerked out of the yeah. um root cellar or storm cellar. Mm -hmm. I, I think you that's know? we we have a we don't have the big because I'm I'm fucking old. I don't I don't really need all that crap. So we just have a normal sound bar underneath our TV and you can I caught even just with that a lot more things that I had missed previously. Yeah, and see, that's amazing to me. It's it's you a know, joy. 
an experience that you, you don't forget, especially with a movie that you love when you, when you catch more nuances that you missed before, it's like, it, it just, it, it increases your love for that movie that much more. It does. And I mean, this movie has a special place in my heart because every year for my birthday, I get steak and eggs. Well, you know, that's what Aunt May uh-huh. was cooking for them. Mm-hmm. And it started in 1996. Or wow. 97, whenever I saw okay. the movie for the first time. And okay. I've done it ever since. That's awesome, though. And it please is. tell me... I'm, please, I'm big on please tradition, tell, too. Please tell me you went outside naked and threw a, a bottle of Jack into the twister. No, I don't waste no. Jack. Uh, it was an empty I guess bottle. You got a point there. An empty one? Yeah, that'd be all right. Okay, yeah, I threw an empty one. Because it might yeah. fall down and hit Jesse in the head. <laughs> well, it's got to get in that suck zone, you know, where it sucks it oh, up. Oh, <laughs> yeah, because then at that point, the tornado is going to be competing with Jesse for the bigger suck zone. Yeah, or a $2 hooker on payday. Exactly. He is just getting torn to shreds, and I don't feel one bit bad about it. I don't either. Because I know nice. if, him and, if him and Ian were doing one, they would just be tearing up. Well, you know, if, I mean, I guess as much as as of utterly show we are. Them. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, all the behind-the-scenes stuff I wish we were allowed to record and put out there. But <laughs> people would get canceled. <laughs> there is a very, very good possibility. I know for a fact that our show would get shot down <laughs> quick. Uh, like with Jesse last week, you know, playing the end credits and <laughs> the dumbass. <laughs> it was still playing, and I affectionately call him a dumbass there because as it was playing, Jesse was like, Do they have one for them transgenders? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, it's just, I was it's so hard. I was getting dizzy. I couldn't even catch my breath, and I called for two days. It's it's almost you know like your end credits or the blooper reels. It's some, sometimes that's better than the actual. You know, project. Yeah. But no, yes. this movie, I I don't know. I to be honest with you, I I think it's it's I'm it comes with a I can't say slight, but a huge obsession with tornadoes. I mean, when I was a kid, I was in one, and I think that just um from that point on, I've been just obsessed with anything tornado that I can get my hands on or. You know, I don't. Right. I don't know. It, it's. I think it's because I think it's the, it's the beauty and the damage is what intrigues the, intrigues me the most. The power. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of power in those storms, and I've seen some little tornadoes, and we had a big one here in Adela several years back, and uh-huh. I mean, there's just something about that power that it's it's like majestic. It is. It is. It's 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 an un, unharnessed beast, is what it is. Yeah. There, you nobody can control it, and it, it's just here. It's it is mind blowing. This is what we're both looking for. It's uncontrolled chaos in a physical form. Yep. Yep. I mean, I've gotten to the point where this was. This been probably five, six years ago. There was a time when when our city offered um, storm spotter classes, and oh, I would no, go. That'd be cool. I would go to them and get certified as a storm spotter. Well, in my mind, storm spotter, if you pull the spotter out of it and put chaser in there, and automatically, in my mind, I'm a certified storm chaser. Turns ah. out, it's not really that good of an idea to do so with you, if you're going in by yourself and not having any clue. We had a, a badass storm on its way coming here, and I said, I'm fucking going to go and chase this thing. So I jumped in our Explorer we had at the time, and I'm going up up the side of what's – it's called the rims here. It's where the airport and everything is, but you kind of basically go up the side of this mountain, and I know where to get to the crest of the top of that and hail. Oh, I don't know. It was bigger than golf ball. Just started Jeez. pulling. It, it broke my windows. It beat the hell out of my Explorer. I said that was enough because it was so loud inside of that inside the car. I went flying back down the road towards the house. 
and all the power was out downtown. So there was no street lights and the cars come. I'm trying to stop. There was hail. It was like ice. It is something that has to be uh, felt to believe the oh, yeah. unbelievableness of it. I mean, I've never been in hail coming down a mountain, you know, but we, we've had some hail storms here before with golf ball size, some baseball yeah. size, not many yep. of them, but I mean. That's deadly. It's fucking deadly. Yeah. I mean, that hits you just right. That'll crack your skull. Oh, yeah, it'll kill you. I mean, you get they get big enough, it'll kill you right where you stand. We had, uh, it was on Father's Day one year. Um, we were, I can't remember what we were doing, but a uh, warning come across the TV for a tornado. And where we're at in Billings, these things, you don't, they, they what, what happens is they'll, we have what's called the Billings 710 split. It's like, There'll be a bad storm heading right towards us, and it once it hits city limit, it splits and goes either direction. So we never – we get severe shit. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. the worst of it is kind of on the outskirts, I guess. Well, there's a – you know, they're saying all the warning, and, and we're so accustomed to it that we just don't even, you know, like whatever. Well, the weather started getting a lot nastier than what normal around here. And I thought, well, it's it was getting bad. So I thought, well, we better take shelter because we're the house we're in doesn't have a basement. So I knew some people that had a basement. So like we better get over there because something's not fucking right here because the lightning was striking really close. And so as we're taking off to go over there, I'm backing out of our driveway. And as I'm turning around looking, there's a tornado coming down that same road that I was just telling you about, just Holy eating, crap. eating all kinds of stuff. It our big uh arena where they have concerts stadium and everything it tore the roof completely off of it did a bunch of damage there but yeah it's uh just i think with this movie just seeing what those things can do and how big they can get makes it just that more real to me and the i think personally i don't know how you feel but i want to i want your opinion on it is the sound design that they did with this um well i have seen it you know with sight um and, and okay. I've also watched it several times without it. I don't okay. need all the description because I've seen it so many times. But <laughs> with my sound bar, I mean, it's not the top of the line, but it's, it's a mm-hmm. really good quality one. You can feel it vibrating, you know, mm-hmm. like the thunder actually rumbling. Yeah. Um. Now, what I've done before to increase the ambiance of it is, like, watch it with my headphones, but have a storm track playing on the sound bar. Okay. So, it, like, increases the ambience or the ambiance, as Jesse would say. Now, he's French. You know, you know, now, I, I love the atmospheric stuff, but as far as, like, a basic soundtrack, man, I love the basic soundtrack to it. You know, like I think the actual music. The music, um, the music's not bad. I think, in my opinion, the 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 score. I guess I don't know if you. I you can't even call it a score. It's more the sound effects. The one that sticks oh, with like me the, the thunder most. Thunder and the lightning. And... Yes, what sticks with me the most is was as uh, Bill and Joe are cresting the hill, and they finally get sight of it. The sound of that thing is almost like it's screaming. You're talking about the one at the end? The, yeah, when it just sounds F5. like it's screaming. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. Dude, that, I, I got goosebumps right now just thinking about it. And that part gets me. And um, when they're in the corn, you know, and trying to dive out of the truck, you can hear the leaves. Yeah. Slapping. Yeah. Um, and I've drove down corn rows before. So, I mean, I know the sound. Mm-hmm. You know, and um tidbit of information there she almost she either almost got a concussion or did get a concussion um in that scene because the door she couldn't get the door open it flew back and hit her in the head yeah yep yep that's right um but i love that little like the i won't say underground sound but not like underground rap artist or anything but like the crickets chirping and the storm comes and there's no more cricket I mean, that's mm-hmm. super realistic to me. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's you know, weird. When you... Yeah. And like the 
the bits on the horse is like shaking you know where the gravel sound with the tires it's so clear and yep yep with me not being able to see it i can i can picture the rocks that they're walking on or i can picture the road that they're traveling on because wet road or wet paved road is totally mm-hmm. different sound than dry paved road yeah and you know i was kind of wondering about that how you know what what your experience with that is as far as watching that with like the the walking on gravel or like you said the crickets are just that has got to be that much more of a a heightened sense i guess yeah i mean it it is it's i won't say that you can hear the individual raindrops you know but you can hear the rain you can see it i guess yeah um you can that's got to just sound so good it it does man And, and there's really no way to describe it um I would suggest, though, like, if you have a good pair of headphones, watching the movie and, mm-hmm. and keeping your eyes closed. Yeah, 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 because yeah, definitely. It, it will pull out more, and you'll still be able to see the movie in your head. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. it's definitely it's phenomenal to seal yeah. Jesse's word of the life. Um, well, in this case, it's okay, because this movie is truly phenomenal. Oh, hold on. I'm getting a text from him. Okay. I think he has the word tabooed because he know he says, I know you just said the word phenomenal. What is you that? What is that fool? talking about me? What is, does that fool have it trademarked or something? How can he sense that? I don't know, but I bet AJ Styles is in trouble. Oh, man. Don't even get me started on that. What you <laughs> should do is, is have Arnold reply to him saying, New phone, who this? <laughs> You're cold. I'm or true. we could have AJ Styles just show up at Jesse's house. Mm. And given him given that phenomenal forearm, or should we call it a taboo forearm? Call it the oh yeah, the taboo forearm. The taboo forearm. And maybe yes. the oh the tabonic the arm. The pod, the pod boss clash. Oh, there we go. There we go. You remember when he was in TNA or what the hell was it? They used to call it the house of style. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't watch much TNA, but I remember him because I got a friend who's friends with him. They quit calling it styles clash for a while. They call it the house of styles blew my fucking mind. I could not figure out for the life of me why they would do that but it's wrestling so anyway yeah and it was also vince he doesn't make sense vince is an idiot or well we were we won't get into that whole yeah debacle that's a whole that's a whole nother episode yeah no this dude this this movie is uh, oh shoot don't oh (laughs) god pun pun intended gotcha gotcha and that's what you know that's okay that you can do that i'm all right with it yeah jesse wouldn't be he he makes me tell him the stuff ahead of time so he can act like he comes up with it. Because, you see, I, I think us feeding off of each other, it just shows that we have a sense of humor and we have feelings. We're easily yes. hurt. And that we can stand up for ourselves sometimes. And not be scared of getting slapped down. Yeah, when it's just us, yeah, we can pick the movie we want to watch. Exactly. Exactly. I do it's have unreal. to ask. This this feels really good. I'm not gonna lie. I, I I feel I got my feet kicked up. I can breathe. I got my you know, Coke Zero Cherry. I have check this out. I mean, totally off subject, but uh, you know those sparkling ice, uh, sparkling waters. Yes, dude. They have Starburst flavored ones now. Really? Yes, yeah, I, I have. I remember the- you and um. TBI, you know, Pod Boss Ian, mm-hmm. uh, talking about a melon water from up there. Melon. That was that was the um, that was the liquid liquid death water. Yes, I haven't been able to find it. It must is it just an up there thing? I don't think so. I think it's pretty much everywhere. Huh. Yeah, but this this star, this sparkling ice Starburst flavor, it tastes just like a strawberry Starburst. Oh, dude, that's my favorite Starburst. Mine too. Jeez, see. Who would have known? 
another strawberry anything for me. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm a fan of strawberries myself. Oh, yeah. See, Jesse tells me I should be a peach fan because I'm from Georgia. Yeah, well, you know. that's, you know, Jesse, once again, <laughs> you know, throwing his yeah. weight around. But, you know. See, we, we got PBI and we got PBJ. PBJ. Don't disparage a peanut butter and jelly sandwich by that. This is true. He yelled at me for how I made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches the other day. How do you make them? I prefer to mix mine up in a bowl to make it smoother and easier to spread. And what's wrong with that? Evidently, it's a heathenistic way of making a delectable American pastime treat. A hedonistic way of making one? <laughs> yes. Okay. Unlike his hedonistic ways of breaking people's shitters. Unlike his hedonistic ways of being on a live podcast, eating a brownie and disappearing, God knows where he went to. Or just being a hedon you know, all around. Okay. No, you know what? That's cool. I personally, Richard, if it were me, I don't think that I would mix them up. I would put them individually, but you know what? It all goes to the same place. It all mixes together at the same time. And it all comes out smelling like shit. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I suppose it, it comes out a lot easier if you use more peanut anyway. Good God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, this, you know, this movie, it's it's always going to hold a uh, five stars that definitely. special place, you know. Oh, if if I could give it more, I would. Five, it's definitely five stars. It's you know something. This is our podcast. I'm giving it hundred stars. Oh, I'm going to give it a hundred too. I mean, why wouldn't we? Exactly. This when movie you give it is that good. I'm giving it hundred three. I'm going to give it hundred and twelve. You know what? Better That's yet, a good number. Uh, I'm going to give it 2,630 stars just to oh. spite Jesse for being greedy with his talking all the goddamn time. Yep. You can't, you can't go higher than that. Nope. Otherwise, you break the hot uh, boss Jesse code. Exactly. And we do not want to do that. No, so, Armageddon and the, oh, the apocalypse would come. Uh, but I do have a question for you. Yes, sir. In this movie, we know there's several different characters who's your favorite oh bill paxton oh second favorite i love that guy yeah, but I love dusty. Dusty. it's perfect huh i love dusty i'll give you that too i'll i'll take that yeah i mean bill, i mean they're like neck and neck you know i love the gritty aspect of bill paxton Mm -hmm. You know, but I love the zany. Oh, I'm high as a freaking kite because I eat brownies like um, oh, Dusty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You and know, did you know the... that he he is dead now? Yeah, unfortunately, that's that's a sad day. You know, you know what's what's really. I mean, it's not cool that he's he's passed, but all the storm chasers every year will go and position themselves where their GPS will. Um, Basically, in a, on a map of throughout some states, it'll where they're at the it spells out BP. Yes, for Bill Paxton. Yep, yep, that is the coolest. And on Facebook, there's a um, I want to say it. I can't remember the name of it. I wish I could. But you have to look it up. It's it's a Twisters movie page. That ah. there, there's people on there that have replicas of his truck. It it's. Before it's unbelievable. or after? Huh? Before or after? Before. Before, oh, yeah. Before, okay. Because I'd like I, to have one imagine. after the fact, too. Oh, it's probably, there was probably nothing left of it. But, you know, that bring you know, with that being said, I, I am very curious about this new movie that's going to be coming out. What are your I'm thoughts? I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Now, Ian was saying something that uh, Helen Hunt was was supposed to be in the trailer. I didn't see her. I, I did not hear her voice. But I apparently she's supposed to be in it. I, I really, I just, I got excited to be honest, watch the trailer and that was it. I didn't dig into it. But if I remember right, she was supposed to be into it. And I think it's one of the people that are doing all the chasing is supposed to be hers and Bill Paxton's kid, I guess. 
See, I wondered about that. I wonder if they would do something like that, which I like. Oh, I mean, I'm okay with it too. Yeah. Huh. I, I know I didn't hear her voice, but I did watch I didn't. the minute long one. I think I watched like the three minute long one, but I, I didn't see her. There's images of her, but I didn't see her in it. Yeah. You know, either way, I mean, it's fine. I'm still going to, I'll, I mean, I guess I might I just have to pull the trigger on it and go watch it in the theater just <clears throat> for that experience. I just, I, with me, some yeah. movies, I, I, I put too much on it. You know, I like with, say with twister i expect twisters to be just as good if not better and it might not be and i, I don't want to be disappointed in it but at the same time it's not going to attract any of my love for twister itself exactly well, i got an idea then after okay. it comes out let's both watch it and then we'll do okay. another episode absolutely most definitely but we definitely got to do one before then too oh it's, this is this is just this is like Mixing peanut butter and jelly together and spreading it on at the same time. It's so easy and smooth this way. Or if you prefer yours going on separately, it melds perfectly when you make the sandwich. Exactly. Exactly. And it's just, I think the best part is it's going to just grate on those two to know that they're just, I don't know. They are they may try and scheme against this, but I think what, what we're doing right here, you ain't going to touch it. Nah. But you know, so let, me, let me ask you this. Yes. There has been. Do you have a time limit on here? No. Nah. Okay. Not a special there, episode. There has been countless. Uh, I don't want to call them knockoffs. Okay. Attempts at making um, more tornado movies. Have you seen any of these? I've seen. What's it called? Night of the Twisters? Is that the one with John Schneider? I can't. I'm horrible with names. Uh, Bo Duke. Oh, I know that, but. That's who John I, Schneider is. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, I know. Night of the Twisters. I think it is. For some reason, I'm thinking so. It's been years, so I only watched it the one time. I kind of liked it. I don't remember much about it. I think it was I actually remember done. remember it. Do what? Okay. I think it was done pretty well for its time. And I mean, I kind of enjoyed it. From what I remember, and it's not much, I remember liking it. I can't remember loving it or anything like that. That's but fair. God, it's been so long, though. Now I'm going to have to look that one up. Have you seen Into the Storm? No, I have not. It has. Oh, you've seen The Walking Dead, right? No, because it's too visual. Okay, God dang it. For well, me, one of the anyway. ladies on there, Rick, I think it's Rick's wife is in it. And, mm. you know, and sadly and unfortunately, that, that one too is one of a visual one, but they really went, in my opinion, over the top with the effects of it because it there's one spot in it where I think they're in a school and the hail is coming down and it it sounds that sound is almost right up there with when Bill and Joe come across come into that F five that's screaming. It's so oh. iconic to me. Yeah. You know that's Into that one's not screen. a bad watch. I'm gonna let that one up whenever we get off of here. Because I, if I remember correctly, right in the beginning of there's some kids out cruising around, and it's just real subtle with the weather. And then all of a sudden, this tornado comes in. And just, I, I think if I remember right, it just takes the car there and just sucks it right in the air, and that's it. Huh. Into yeah. the storm. Yeah. yeah I'm into the this storm. One up. Um, there's also another one that just came out and they filmed a bunch of it here in Billings um, called Supercell. I've heard the name. That one, I think it just came out here. It was last year sometime. I started watching it, but I had to go do something else and I never did get a, quite a chance to finish it. Oh, you pulled a Jesse. Yeah, yeah, I did. And I should have come back and, 
and finished watching it. I mean, I'm not a not a big Alec Baldwin guy, but again, it's tornado, so I am. <laughs> a lot of times, my curiosity gets piqued. That being said, there are exceptions to the rule, and right. Jesse would know exactly where I'm going with this. There are just some things that don't go together, and I'm I'm going to lean into this by saying shark and NATO does not you don't even get me started. Now, again, I'm not I'm not going to be a poo pooer here. I get what they were going for. I understand why they did it, and it <laughs> that thing took off like gangbusters. It's not my thing. I tried. I I tried desperately to to watch him, and I just could not, could not do it. It's almost like in shitty ass. I cannot stomach it. That's Jesse's movie, though, ain't it? Sharknado. No, um, in shitty ass. In si- uh, no, it's it's his movie because he knows how much it gets under my skin. <laughs> man, Sharknado, God, that sucks. And, There's a reason that entire movie collection was on sale here a while back. The entire collection, nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Exactly. I, I think it was cool that you know they they had a bunch of cameos from different people. You know, some that haven't been in the limelight forever. And I give them an A for effort. It's just not my thing. And when when it starts to encroach on something that I I really love and am and passionate about. It's it's like okay, I kind of backtrack a little bit and say, you know what? It's just if it's on, I'm sure shit not gonna watch it. I'll immediately turn the channel to something else. Yes, I know what you mean. All right, back back to Twister for a second. You okay? And I, I don't, I remember it, but I don't remember the scene exactly well. You remember the scene with the uh, sisters, the sister tornado. With mm-hmm. the, the twins, the twins, mm-hmm. yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. To me, the cow. To me, it sounds like two different cows. No, it's the same. What we'll see what what happened, but what was going on in that scene is obviously you've got the twins, yeah, and as they're driving through it, the 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 gal goes, "There's a cow." Yeah, and you wait a few minutes, and and it's stuck in the tornado, and it the tornado brings it back around again. It's like there's the cow again. It's the same cow, it's just it's getting spun around in the tornado, which is taking it forever to, to come back full circle. See, it, it sounded like it was two different cows, like one of them was further away. It may have just it may just be the way that their sound design was at the time, but I'm I'm yeah. almost certain it was just one cow. That was the main oh. question I wanted to ask you about that. Oh, and we how we would be remiss if we didn't mention one of the most famous quotes in the movie itself. And it's Joe. And she said, where's my truck? And it falls out of the sky. Oh, there it is. There's the screaming. You can hear the metal, the glass. Oh. God. Oh, dude. And then, it's just... and then, then my dude, Dusty, she almost got hit by the truck. You know? Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's, oh, God. It, Oh, oh, I really want to such, watch this again. Oh. Yeah, such a good movie. Such a good movie. No, 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 I take that back. It's our podcast. It's a phenomenal movie. No, no, it's a taboo movie. Oh, oh yep. Yeah. See, I just got another text. Yeah, I see it. I I say just send either send Arnold or AJ over there to have a talk with them. Hey, why can't we send them both? We could. We could. I mean, it well. It depends. Oh, Jesse, the last action zero. Oh man, absolutely. Well, we got to get Arnold out of the filing cabinet. I think he's yeah. not going to find anything in there. Let, let me go get him. Well, man, I have enjoyed this chat with you. Um, oh, what's Arnold doing? He's oh my gosh, he's looking at a picture of Jesse. Oh wait, that that's proof. You see the He's photo, Jesse is sitting on the toilet, covering up his junk with a half-eaten brownie and pizza slice. 
and there's water spraying everywhere. Oh, man. Arnold's never going to be the same again. He's crying. Can There's you blame no crying him? Crying and podcasting. Well, with that, you have to cry. Yeah, Good. or be like me and pull your eyes out. Oh, whoa! I mean, I the Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, my dude? Oh shit! No, we're just gonna have to get together and do this again. Before I think, before that, yeah, we need to just do this more often. I think. Yes, pick out a a day and do it. But uh, anyway, my dude, I have enjoyed it. Stay online. Here, I'll man. close this recording. And uh, hey, Jesse, I know you're on the cruise, but you're still a bitch, bitch. <laughs>